In October of 1991, investigators from OSHA, Federal Environmental Agency, came to Wilkesboro University in Pennsylvania looking for an elusive and deadly killer. It was during the renovation of a chemistry lab there that an electrician by the name of Robert Curley suddenly became gravely ill. He was brought into the hospital delirious, insisting that his body felt like it was on fire. He was in such excruciating pain that doctors needed to restrain him. I just literally begged the doctor to get help. And I said, you don't know what's wrong with Bob. I said, you have to get help to find out what is wrong with him to treat him. But there was nothing anyone could do to save him. And four days later, at the age of only 33, Robert Curley was dead from a painful and still unexplained illness. It had been just one year before that Robert and his wife Joanne had gotten married. Their friends and family joined with them to celebrate the occasion. Now, those same people were confused and angry. A young man was dead, and no one could explain why. The mystery only deepened when lab tests revealed that Robert had not died from some disease, but from a rare and deadly poison called thallium. Environmental scientists were brought into the lab because officials now feared that it might be contaminated. They first took air samples and then swabbed every surface to see if they could find traces of the poison. But they found nothing until they looked in a small storeroom in the back of the lab. To their surprise, they discovered five bottles that contained thallium. Now concerned that other members of the work crew might also have been contaminated, OSHA had them tested as well. I was upset. Everybody was upset, feeling that there was that thallium poisoning around and you know, we were exposed to it. We didn't know how or when we got exposed to it. And if Bobby was exposed to it, well, our chances were very good too. Fortunately, doctors found that the workers were unaffected. But Joanne said she was still worried and asked that she and her daughter also be tested. When those test results came back, it was fascinating. The results showed that Joanne Curley had certain levels of thallium in her, above and beyond what you would expect to see in the ordinary person. Uh, additionally, the four-year-old daughter of Joanne Curley had elevated levels of thallium. This brought detectives to her home. There, she showed them a thermos that was often used by the family, especially Robert, who took it to work with him each day. Lab tests revealed that the thermos did indeed have traces of thallium. The question was, how did it get there? The investigators wanted to focus on the laboratory itself. Bob was working in the lab, there was thallium in the lab, and his co-workers, of course, were, had access to the same thallium. While detectives were investigating Robert Curley's co-workers, Joanne angrily filed a lawsuit against Wilkes University for allowing the outlawed poison to be present at her husband's work site. As the case continued to make headlines, detectives realized they needed help, so they called in Dr. Michael Bodden. When I spoke to the district attorney, I suggested to him that we exhume the body in order to look at Mr. Curley's hair, because the hair is a storehouse from many of the drugs we take into our body, including thallium, and we might be able to tell when the poisoning started and when it ended. On August 23, 1994, almost three years after his death, Robert Curley's body was exhumed. 
When we opened the casket, even though the body was decomposing, there was hair present on the scalp that was five inches long, which represented about 12 months of hair growth. We lined up 200 of the hairs and cut them into 25 cross sections, each segment representing about two weeks of hair growth. The uh, segment nearest the root being what he took shortly before his death, and the tip of the hair representing what he might have taken a year earlier. Each of these small sections of hair was then dissolved in acid and vaporized, leaving behind any thallium that might be present. From the chemical analysis, a toxicologist by the name of Dr. Frederick Reeders was able to develop a timeline indicating when Robert Curley had been poisoned. And it showed that the poisoning had begun more than six months before he went to work at the university. And even more surprising, it showed that Mr. Curley received the largest dose, the fatal dose, only a few days before he died, while he was still in the hospital. In addition, when Dr. Readers examined Robert Curley's digestive tract, he found two heavy concentrations of thallium in the small intestine. The concentration of thallium in the intestinal tract was a thousand times higher than in the hair or in any of the other tissues. So it was milligrams instead of micrograms and it had to be of recent origin. The autopsy had proved that Robert Curley had not only been systematically poisoned for more than a year, but that he had received a massive dose of thallium in the hospital just a few days before his death. The difficulty then became, okay, now we can establish that there was a chronic series of poisonings, but who did it? Who was the person responsible? Detectives now began to research the whereabouts of friends and family members to see who was around during the time Robert Curley was poisoned. Ultimately, what we were able to show is that 25 of 26 suspects could not have poisoned Bob Curley. The investigation showed that nobody in the world but Joanne Curley could have done this. In December of 1996, Joanne Curley was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. Confronted with the forensic evidence and frightened of the death penalty, Joanne Curley broke down and confessed. She said, I took the rat poison and put it in a drink. I don't remember how much it was. It was just like pouring it in. When she was asked, why did you kill Bob Curley? Her response was very, very chilling. It was for his money. I wanted Bob's money. And at that point, Bob's estate uh, was worth about just shy of $300,000. It is ironic that Joanne Curley began to poison her husband only two months after they were married. In my personal judgment, Joanne Curley thought she got away with murder. Joanne Curley never thought that she would be arrested for this crime. Remember one thing. Had Joanne Curley cremated Bob Curley, there would have never been an arrest. I 